To test for a calcaneal stress fracture, uh, we then perform a medial to lateral squeeze test. This is directly on the bone. Any presence of tenderness uh, suggests the presence of a fracture, and this should be followed up by a lateral heel radiograph. If you move just proximal to this area, this is the retrocalcaneal space. Tenderness in this region uh, may lead one to suspect any distal Achilles uh, tendinopathy, subtalar or ankle arthrosis, or posterior impingement syndrome. Posterior impingement of the uh, ankle uh, is noted uh, in ballet dancers or athletes when they go to plantar flex the foot. Uh, the os trigonum, which is an accessory ossicle off of the posterior process of the talus, then becomes impinged between uh, the posterior aspect of the talus and the posterior aspect uh, of the distal tibia. So when patients then plant our flex and we put axial load on this region, uh, if this creates discomfort, this is known as posterior impingement syndrome or a symptomatic os trigonum. The Haglund's deformity uh, is presence of a prominent calcaneal tuberosity along the lateral aspect of the heel. This is also referred to as a pump bump and can be associated with insertional Achilles tendinopathy. Uh, patients typically have point tenderness over the enlarged tuberosity. Posterior medial heel discomfort may be associated with tenosynovitis of the flexor hyacinth longus tendon. This travels in the deep posterior compartment and then travels medially and posteriorly in a groove behind uh, the talus uh, to move posterior to the medial malleolus and insert on the plantar aspect of the hallux. In patients with flexor hallucis longus tenosynovitis, they will have a functional hallux rigidus. So with the foot in a plantar flex position, we will notice full range of motion of the hallux. When that foot is brought up to a dorsiflex position, these patients will then have limited hallux range of motion as we are creating more tension on the FHL as it travels behind the medial malleolus. Additionally, patients that have principally posterior medial heel discomfort or inferior heel discomfort need to be evaluated for tarsal tunnel syndrome, which involves irritation of the tibial nerve as it travels in the tarsal canal. The nerve trifurcates into a calcaneal branch as well as the medial and lateral plantar nerves. In these patients, either uh, direct pressure placed on the nerve or gentle uh, percussion will recreate dysesthesias or numbness in the nerve. And the nerve can be brought uh, a bit more superficially if we dorsiflex and evert the ankle. And uh, this may exacerbate uh, the patient's symptoms. Plantar fasciitis uh, is typically uh, palpated at the origin of the plantar fascia just off of the posterior medial aspect of the inferior aspect of the uh, tuberosity of the calcaneus. This needs to be differentiated from uh, direct inferior heel pain, uh, which is also called a stone bruise and is due to fat pad atrophy. This type of heel pain uh, does not respond to uh, cortisone injection and an injection should never be performed here, whereas true plantar fasciitis uh, will respond to an injection. If we dorsiflex the hallux, we can bring the plantar fascia uh, more superficial. And in this case, you see that this is obviously intact. This is known as the windlass mechanism and helps to create the medial longitudinal arch. If you travel just superior to the origin of the plantar fascia, 
This is where the first branch of the lateral plantar nerve uh, exits uh, the tarsal canal and irritation of this nerve has also been closely associated with plantar fasciitis. One should also palpate uh, the direct uh, plantar aspect of the fascia to check for any nodules. Any nodular abnormality is called a plantar fibroma. This is a benign condition which is best treated with uh, orthotics. Next, if we isolate the medial ankle and hind foot, there are several uh, bony structures that need to be palpated. First, the medial malleolus, which may be tender uh, after ankle sprain uh, or twisting injury. Must, one must also assess the deltoid ligament, which sits just inferior uh, to the medial malleolus uh, for uh, any tenderness. Inferior to the medial malleolus is the middle facet of the subtalar joint. This may be tender uh, in patients that have a congenital condition called tarsal coalition. Tarsal coalition can lead to a uh, rigid flat foot deformity uh, which typically is first seen in adolescents as their uh, growth plates are beginning to fuse. And in some cases, uh, this rigid flat foot deformity also leads to perineal spasticity as one attempts to passively invert the foot. These patients, uh, once the foot is inverted, will then have what appears to be clonus uh, of the foot as that uh, everts. This really is due to stretching the perineals which uh, then attempt to go back to a resting position. Additionally, if one has tenderness over the middle facet, uh, the examiner should check for uh, abnormal or diminished subtalar range of motion. Tenderness in this region after an injury to the hind foot or ankle uh, must also lead the examiner to suspect a fracture of the sustentaculum tali of the calcaneus. Just further uh, distal to this is the navicular tuberosity. This is where the posterior tibial tendon inserts. So once again, if we ask the patient to plantar flex and invert their foot, we can isolate the posterior tibial tendon as it inserts on the tuberosity. Some patients will have an accessory navicula uh, which can be painful and is usually quite prominent and this is closely associated with posterior tibial tendonitis. Next is the regional examination of the anterior ankle. The differential diagnosis is anterior impingement uh, which is due to overgrowth of osteophytes on the anterior aspect of the ankle. Uh, the differential diagnosis also includes arthrosis synovitis of the joint, which is associated with either rheumatoid arthritis or the other seronegative arthropathies, gout, as well as pigmented villonodular synovitis. Lastly, uh, patients that have uh, discomfort in the anterior aspect of the ankle uh, must be assessed for the presence of an osteochondral lesion of the talus. Uh, this is an injury that involves uh, fracture uh, of the uh, cartilage and underlying subchondral bone and typically in post-traumatic injuries this is noted to be posterior medial. Patients can also present with an anterior lateral OLT which is more typically uh, idiopathic in nature. Additionally uh, along the anterior aspect of the ankle one must assess if there is any anterior lateral uh, impingement uh, which uh, may be associated uh, with ankle sprains. In order to test for impingement of the ankle, the ankle is passively dorsiflexed and if this exacerbates or creates the patient's symptoms, uh, then a confirmatory lateral ankle radiograph uh, needs to be performed. Patients with arthrosis 
or arthritis, which is active inflammation uh, secondary to degeneration of the ankle joint, will have uh, diffuse tenderness along the, the joint line. And this is quite similar to synovitis created by any of the seronegative arthropathies, gout, or PVNS. In this case, weight-bearing radiographs of the ankle are quite uh, helpful to differentiate those different uh, diagnoses. In addition, any patient with a suspected OLT uh, should have weight-bearing radiographs obtained of the ankle. If there is remaining clinical suspicion uh, or incomplete diagnosis at this point, a CT scan or MRI of the ankle is quite helpful in elucidating those pathologies. The last point